So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's a hot day in Tennessee. I think it's supposed to get up to about 96 degrees today. And the humidity's just as worse. I've got a pretty good load of goodies in the back of the tracker, but I'm not sure what we'll get to today as far as getting those out and getting them out of the box. I may do that in the next video, I'm not sure. But for now, let me show you guys what we're gonna be working on. So today's goal is picking up where I left off in the last video in setting up this area of the shop for the blacksmith forge. And I think we should be able to get the metal on this wall today and maybe work on this wall behind you guys. I've got a small opening right here that was a doorway and I really don't use it. It really serves no purpose down here. So I'm gonna close that in as well because I've got a brand new drill press. We're gonna be putting on that wall over there. But the first thing we wanna do is focus on this metal. And if you watched the last video, you guys saw me install this poplar. This is our runners to attach the metal to. We'll call these girts. I'm sure somebody down in the comments will correct me on that, but I call them girts. You can call them what you want. I got four of these running horizontally on my wall and that's what we'll attach the metal to. Something else about this wall, friends, a few of you guys asked in the comments in the last video why I was not going to insulate this wall. Well, the reason being, it's an interior wall. On the other side of this wall is the molder room, so there's really no use in putting insulation in this. I guess maybe you could, but I'm not sure what purpose that would serve. So the first piece to put on our metal wall here is going to be rat guard that goes right here on the bottom, and it has the same exact piece that will go on the top. Just going to take off our hat since we're working inside today. And if you see me wearing this hat a lot in videos, the main reason is because they found some skin cancer on my face the other day. And my doctor tells me I should be wearing a hat outside year round. So there's that. This right here is called rat guard, like I was saying, and it goes on the bottom of your trim. And if you guys remember when I put the metal siding on the timber frame, I put this at the bottom of all the metal and I could be wrong about this. It's called rat guard. And the reason is it seals up the bottom of your panels and keeps the rat out or the rats out. I should say that plural, not singular, but uh, pretty sure that's why it's called that. Once again, I could be wrong. It'll be the first time this year though, if I am. That's one thing about us YouTubers, guys. We are rarely wrong about anything. Just ask us. So uh, my buddy Killinger was asking me about doing an EDC video. He's going to be doing one. Would you guys like to see that showing you my everyday carry? I'll give you a sneak peek. That's my bench made pocket knife. I can't remember the numbers on it. Seven, no, it's the production number. I can't remember the number. 870 maybe, I can't remember. Love that knife, I carry it every day. If you guys want me to do an EDC video, let me know down in the comments below and I'll show you guys everything I carry with me every day. So my friends at the metal yard are usually spot on with their measurements, but I want to make sure this rat guard should be exactly 10 foot three inches. And it looks like they're off by 16th. I guess I'll be sending this one back. I'm just aggravating you guys. That's pretty good right there. That way we can have one solid piece of rat guard on the bottom and the top. I'm putting this on the top also because it kind of trims out the top of the panel. I think it looks pretty good. So hopefully if my measurements were correct and they always are, this should fit right in this little gap. Keyword is should because it doesn't. <laughs> Looks like I told them the wrong measurement. I told them 10 foot three inches and uh, I must have measured that wrong. What we'll to cut this down to size. Rat guard is pretty thin. Should be no problem for these cutters right here. Now that should fit right in there. There we go, a good fit. I wanna raise this off the floor though, about an inch or so. Put a little piece of scrap under this, and we'll install it. 
When you're installing rat guard, I like to use these little silver shank nails and they're galvanized. You don't want to put screws on this because screws, I think, will go right through it. And these are pretty flat on the end. You can bury them in that rat guard and it won't stick through your metal. I'll put a few more nails in this, friends, and we'll move on to the top piece. Put one more on this other end, that should be enough. And I'll tell you what's kind of comical. When I do these little shop videos while I'm in here building stuff and not at the sawmill, I feel like Norm Abrams when I'm kind of uh, telling you guys what I'm doing. I can hear his voice in the back of my head, the new Yankee workshop guy. If you're not familiar with that, it's kind of comical. I'll tell you what, it is getting hot in here. The higher up I go, the hotter it gets. I just love it when I drop my nail and I don't have any more in my pocket. That's one of the best films in the world. But well, we got our rat guard on, we're ready for metal. Let's go grab the saw horses because I gotta pre-drill my holes in the metal. And I've done that in the past and it sure does bother a lot of people that I pre-drill holes in metals. But I'll tell you one thing, I just had a metal roof put on my house and guess what they did to every panel on that roof? You guessed it, they pre-drilled them. So if the pros do it, and those guys are pros, they do metal roots for a living, then I think I'm probably doing it right. So uh, for you guys that it bothers, I don't know what to tell you. Just keep watching, I guess. Did I mention how hot it is today? And I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting really excited about this new little interest in blacksmithing or I guess an old interest, but my renewed interest in finally setting up the shop, if that makes any sense or not, it probably don't. But most of you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't wait to start bending some iron in here. Bending some iron. Well, I'll tell you what, you can tell that I'm green. Bending iron, my goodness. All right, let's get going. I think Bruno is up there in the swimming pool today. He's a lot smarter than I am. So if my measurements are right, and they usually are not right, I think three of these will be enough for that wall. There's one, here's number two. And number three. Friends, right there is the wall. I still need to go back and put screws up around the top, but I won't bore you guys with that. But we do have one problem, and that is this gap right over here near the post. And I figured I wouldn't get lucky and it would fall right against that post right there. And we got about a three inch gap left between the metal and our post and that brace right there. But here's what we're gonna do. So I have a bunch of scrap pine down here, three quarter, I think this is four inches wide. I'm gonna put it against this post and attach it with some nails and get it secured. And then we'll put some more rat guard right here against this board and that will extend under this metal and close it up. And something else, I want this pine to match the existing post and that post has been burned. The, uh, the method's called Shoshujiban. 
and I'm probably butchering the name. So we're gonna go ahead and burn this before we attach it. That way it blends in together. If we don't do that, that yellow pine against that white pine that's been burned, that stands out too much. I don't like it. So I started burning this with my little Coleman propane tank. I use this primarily for lighting the wood stove. It's a lot faster than a lighter. It will get the job done, but as you can see, it's going to take forever. So let's go grab the bit torch. Got these ready to go. I think they look pretty good. There's just something about this Shoshuji bond, if I'm saying that right. When you burn the wood, especially pine, I think it just makes it look so good, guys. I'm a big fan of it right there. The second piece is gonna need cut down on the miter saw. So hopefully if my measurement is right, and it's not been right all day, this will slide right in there. I'll tell you what friends, that is gonna work perfect right there. You can't even tell it's separated from this metal panel right here. It looks like it just flows directly over and has a little bend on the end of it. Man, that looks nice. Try to line that up as close as I can get it. Now, unlike the rat guard at the bottom where I use those nails, since this will be showing, we're gonna use the screws that we use to attach these panels. It looked a whole lot better. I say how good this looks already. Man, that looks good right there, I tell you. That is nice. I thought I was gonna be left with a mesh right here on this end. All right, I need to drill two more holes for the rat guard and put in about four screws and we'll be done. And while I'm doing that, if you guys don't care, hit that thumbs up button right there on the bottom of the screen. YouTube says it helps these videos out. So let's see if it works. I like to get about 5,000 of you guys to hit that button if you don't care. So if you guys take care of that and go grab you a cup of coffee, we'll come back here in a minute and work on something else. I think once this is finished, we'll start on the wall right behind you guys and putting some shiplap to cover up that closed cell insulation. All right, guys, there we go. The finished wall that will be the backdrop for the blacksmithing area. And I know that's not a large area. It's 10 feet long and we got about five feet of clearance in front of us. And here's a close up of that trim piece. Right there is the yellow pine that we burnt today and it really blends in nice with this post. It's a little proud of the post, about a quarter of an inch, but that's not a big deal. You can't even really tell it. I think it looks really nice. I sure am bragging on myself a lot today. So now we're gonna move on to this little wall right here 
and I probably won't go all the way up with it just yet because I'm not sure what I'm going to do over top of the doorway. But I'll try to go up at least to this white oak brace and fill all this in. And we're going to be using white pine nickel gap shiplap, which is what we've been making here for the past few videos on this little section right here. And that'll do two things. It will cover up this ugly closed cell insulation and will also work to protect it from fire because I'm not sure, but this right here looks flammable and I want to cover it up. I don't want any sparks from the forge coming over here and catching this on fire. So that's what we're going to do next, guys. Y'all hang in there. A quick tip here for you guys with miter saws that want to make repeatable cuts and you don't have a stop block. This is just a regular miter saw stand. What brand is this? Uh, Hercules. I got this at Harbor Freight. And it doesn't have a stop block. So if you want to make repeatable cuts and all of them be the same length, this is what you do. Now I've already done this, but I went ahead and made a fresh cut on the end of this pine. This is white pine, saw milled, kiln dried, and molded in a shiplap here at my location. There's nothing better than a finished product at your location, friends, and the log never goes anywhere else. The whole process is handled here at my sawmill. I'm getting off topic. Anyways, so you make your fresh cut right here because you want a nice straight edge with this edge. And then here's the trick. You pull out this little arm and you bring up this roller so the roller is not going to hit the board. Instead, this post that holds up the roller will hit the board. And you set your measurement, which is uh, 38 and three quarters. So you make your cut, you slide it over, it hits that post, and there you go. Every time you'll have the same width or the same length rather on all your cuts. And somebody was asking me in a prior video about this dust hood for the miter saw. How do I like it? It works pretty good. It's not ideal. I wish I had like a uh, fest tool miter saw. It has really good dust collection. The dust collection on these DeWalt's is not that good. It's not terrible, but it could be a whole lot better. That's why I got this dust hood around it. But it works pretty good. I would probably buy this again if I was going to do this whole setup, but hopefully one day I can justify buying a fest tool, but it's like $1,600. That's a lot of money for a miter saw. But if you're interested in this one, I got it on Amazon. There's a link down below to save you the hassle of trying to find it. It took me a long time to find this thing on Amazon. of those cut that should be a good start get the air holes up to a little brad nailer get started board number one the first of many This last one installed. As I go up on this row, I'm going to start cutting some uh, miters on this side to run it against this white oak right here. And I don't have to be exactly perfect with these miters. I'm going to come back with a piece of trim to hide the gap because it's not going to be perfect. There's no way. And I'll also put some trim on these sides right here running straight down. Let me tilt the camera, you guys can see what I'm talking about. There we go. I'll be putting some trim also on the gap right here that meets up to this post. So I spared you guys the uh, torture of watching me stare at my miter saw measurements for the past 10 minutes, but I wanted to get this right. Okay, it fits in there and uh, my goodness, that looks good right there. Right against that miter on the 45. 
That can be the name of a song, The Miter of a 45. <laughs> that looks right good, friends. I tell you what, that looks right good. My goodness, my Tennessee uh, dialect is coming out tonight. That looks right good, my goodness. Let's nail this in and I'll show you guys how good it looks. Man, I sure am bragging on myself tonight. All right, so here's the board we just installed, a good tight fit right there against that Western Red Cedar post. Even though we will come back with some trim right there. But over here is what I'm really proud of. I was able to get that really tight against this white oak. This is a white oak four by six brace. And look how tight that is right there, guys. That looks really good. I'm gonna put trim on this, but in a hundred years when the Barnwood Builders season 505, take this barn down, they'll see these miters and they'll know the guy that built it paid attention to what he was doing. So that right there is good, friends. I'm really happy with this. I still need to come in here and do some more spray foam behind that brace. But other than that, I can go ahead at some point and continue up this wall and finish this out. I think I'll answer a few comments. Let's grab the old Q&A chair. Grab my phone, pull up the comments, see if I can answer a few. Here's a good one. It's not really a question though. Nathan, if the sawmill doesn't pan out, consider auditioning for ZZ Top. I'll keep that in mind. I think I've already got the beard part figured out. Now this one's from Ronnie Lloyd. How often do you burn your burn pile? At least once a month, sometimes twice a month, but at least once a month we like to get rid of that stuff. We got several comments in the last video on the new metal roof. One guy here, uh, Mr. Thomas, roof looks great, gonna love that snow this winter. Well, we don't get a lot of snow here actually in Tennessee. In the past two or three years, maybe four or five inches total, it rarely snows here anymore, rarely snows. Here's another question about the roof from Justin Archer. I like the roof, but why did you pick black? That's gonna be really hot. Well, it probably is, but I'm not up there walking on it and it's well insulated. It's got the uh, shingles underneath that we left the shingles on the house and it has insulation. So uh, it really don't matter if it's gonna be hot up there. Nobody's gonna be up there walking around. But I get your point, black does get hot, but it's not gonna affect the house at all. I've been monitoring the heat pump for the past week and it hasn't affected the temperature of the house at all. So I get what you're saying though. All right, so here's another one about the roof. Just curious, this is from uh, Chris Davis. What did your roof cost and who did the work? The work was done by a local contractor and his crew. I don't think he actually has a business name, although he might, I doubt he does. And the cost of it was $17,500. The material was $8,000 and the labor was $9,500. So uh, not too bad. We got several quotes and uh, they were all over the board and that guy was actually the cheapest and they did really good work. Some people wanted $30,000, but I came out, you know, less than 20, so not too bad. Okay, here's a message from David. I can't pronounce your last name, Dave. He asked, uh, when you're making multiple cuts on the sawmill, does it hurt the blade if you keep on making cuts and leave the boards on top of the log, you don't pull them off? It does nothing to the blade, man. I tell you, that, that sawmill is super strong. Every wood miser I've had, I've had four wood misers. I've always left the boards on the log until I was ready to pull them back or with my older mills, drag them back manually. And the weight of those boards on top of your blade has no effect at all on the blade. It doesn't affect it. That's a really strong mill. It pulls the blade right through. Okay, here's a question from Michael Walton. I need some advice. I have a kiln and I have other mill owners asking me to drive for them. How much should I charge? Would it be by the day or by the board foot? Uh, I, don't, I don't drive for people, I never have. Actually, no, I've done it one time and I'll never do it again because I, I don't have time for it. I don't have a good setup here to drive people's lumber. There is a sawmill or a mill workshop where I used to take my boards to and have them dry. Now bear in mind, this was t almost 10 years ago they charged 50 cents a board foot and they had a very large dial kiln. They could handle, I think, 20,000 board feet. But one thing you gotta be careful about if you're drying wood for other people, you gotta have the right insurance. And here's the reason why. Let's say somebody brings you 4,000 board feet of black walnut. Nice four quarter, top notch boards right there. And let's say that you mess up or your kiln malfunctions or uh, let's say maybe lightning strikes your kiln 
and it shuts off during a stage of drying and it messes things up. There's all kinds of bad things that can happen. More so operator error than anything. And you will mess up with your kiln. You will mess up loads of wood. It's going to happen. So if that happens, you got 4,000 board feet of high dollar black wall and it may be costing $10 a board foot. There's $40,000 right there you've ruined in your kiln. You better have the right insurance. That way, if that happens, that you can call your insurance guy and pay a deductible and reimburse that guy for his wood because your butt is on the line when it comes to something like that. You really gotta think about stuff like that, guys. You gotta think about liability in this business. If you don't think about liability, then you're not thinking hard enough because people will come after you if you mess up their product in a kiln. I've heard about it and I've had friends who've had it happen to them. They've had to reimburse customers for the loss of their lumber. So make sure you have the right insurance if you're drying other people's wood. And last but not least, this question right here, or it's more of a comment, comes from Rudy Polar 3673 By the way, I'm not your friend. Okay there, friend. Thanks for watching anyways. I apologize for calling you my friend, my goodness. Some people, I'll tell you what. All right, we're gonna end it on that because I thought that was kind of funny. I actually put that on my Instagram the other day on the stories there. So uh, thanks for watching friends. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because here lately people have been reaching out to me and telling me that YouTube have unsubscribed them to certain channels. So I don't know what's going on there. So make sure that you are subscribed if you enjoy my content. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you enjoy this video because that does help out these videos. Even if you just say nice video, that kind of helps them out and I appreciate that. So coming up tomorrow, guys, I think I'm done working on this wall for a little bit because I'm kind of tired of it, to be honest with you. We're going to start bringing down the tools for the blacksmith area, and we're going to start making the base for my anvil. I have two anvils. I have a mouse hole and a Peter Wright, and they're both around 120 pounds. And the Peter Wright is in the better shape of the two, so that's the first one we're going to set up in here. And hopefully, hopefully by tomorrow or maybe the next day, I'll have the forge set up and we'll actually be heating up some metal and making some stuff. The first thing I want to make is a nail. I don't know what it is, but I've always wanted to make my own nails. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing first, guys. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you back here tomorrow.